Hey friends, welcome back. This lesson is titled The Five Levels of Human Consciousness. There's more levels, there's infinite levels of consciousness in between the one, then all that there is, and then your very personalized thought level of consciousness. But these five levels of consciousness are immediately relevant to your everyday experience, to your everyday investigation processes, to your everyday self-awareness processes, to your everyday creating your reality processes. So I wish to address these five so that you have a clearer overview of how the human psyche basically works, how it's ordered, how it's structured. So you will find that inside this lesson, underneath this video on the lesson page, there is a schematic with these five levels of consciousness. The base level is that of I am consciousness. It's your presence consciousness. It's what we rested into in Enlightenment One, the first Enlightenment course, and the introduction course, the introduction chapter. And this is your base state of I am. This is your natural state of consciousness. This is the, the basis for everything else that is you, that belongs to you as an individuation of the all that is consciousness to arise inside of. So it's very crucial, but it's not that practical in terms of creating or observing certain things because it's simply the natural state of your presence consciousness. So what is more interesting is the next level up, which is that level of frequency, the level of vibration, the level of points of view. In a sense, it's inaccurate to say that this is the level of vibration because everything is vibration, but it's the level of points of view and we could equate that to your vibrational state of being or your vibrational understanding of the universe or your vibrational perspective at any given moment. So in that sense, it's the level of frequency and vibration as well. Because whatever point of view you take on is going to determine your vibrational attitude. So there's the I am consciousness, your core individuation, the point where you become an individuation of the all that is overall consciousness that includes everything. So you are the individuation at the I am level, that I am consciousness level, or you as an individual being, now has the ability, as all consciousnesses have, to vibrate at a certain speed, at a certain rate, in certain harmonic frequencies. And points of view are immediately related to your vibrational state of being. So this level of the points of view is basically the point of view through which your particular I am consciousness looks through when it looks at life. So the second level up, one above the I am, is the level where the I am consciousness starts to choose its perspective. It starts to choose its reality. It starts to choose how it wishes to perceive things. And this is a very malleable level. You'll see that there is different um, parallel perspectives that are drawn on this schematic. And the base one, the center one being bold, being highlighted, which signifies that that represents that that's the particular point of view that your consciousness has chosen to view life through in this moment. But I purposefully included parallel points of view so that you can always be aware of the fact that even though you've chosen one point of view, there's infinite equally valid points of view that may not be as highlighted for you in this moment, but that are nevertheless coexistent with your present point of view, and that each have a different vibratory state of being that comes with that perspective, depending on how much in alignment that perspective is or how far out of alignment with the fundamental principles of the universe that perspective is that will determine how good it feels or how bad it feels, as we've learned in previous lessons and the emotional guidance system. So when consciousness chooses a particular point of view and settles on that, in a sense, that point of view starts to crystallize itself into what we could call a belief. And that brings us to the next level within this schematic. So we can say that beliefs are the same as points of view, but in a slightly more crystallized manifest um, state of being. Just like ice is more manifest than water and water is more manifest than steam, we can in a sense say that points of view are steam-like 
and beliefs are water-like. They're slightly more crystallized, condensed, contracted in a sense. And beliefs are really what generate your physical experience. It's what generates your environment. It's what generates the circumstances you attract to yourself. So it's important to understand that beliefs are the result of points of view because you can change your points of view even when you have a belief. And this is where the idea of fake it till you make it comes in, which sounds terrible, I agree, but it's kind of a fun statement to make. And we can redefine what it actually means. So what does it mean to fake it till you make it? We have all done this our entire lives. We've faked certain points of view, which simply is another word of saying, or another way of saying, we've settled on certain points of view, which are equally valid to the next point of view and the next point of view, and one that's millions of light years in our understanding away. All points of view of the universe through the one's eyes, through the absolute's eyes, are seen as equally valid, and therefore they are. But we as humans settle on certain types of points of view or perspectives that come with certain vibratory frequencies. And when we settle on that, we are in a sense faking it until we make it. So the point of view starts to turn into a belief system very quickly, as soon as we've decided that this particular point of view is the truth, this is reality, this is how things work, this is real, then that point of view goes, all right, let me manifest myself in terms of a belief or a belief system. Now a belief still is non-physical, meaning you can't just pick it up and eat it or throw it around. It's not a physical object, obviously. Nevertheless, it's slightly more physical or quasi-physical than um, than the truly non-physical state of vibration and point of view, where consciousness has full freedom to move about through its points of view, to see life from all kinds of different perspectives. And you have access to that right now. Even if you have belief systems that are crystallized in a certain way, you may have the sense that some of these may no longer serve you. Some of these have already been outgrown by your evolution and yet they may still linger around for a little bit. That's because they are slightly more crystallized versions of your points of view, of your previously settled upon points of view, your previously chosen points of view. Any point of view that you previously stated as, okay, this is the truth, this is how it works, boom, it turned into a belief, and then it started generating and attracting certain types of circumstances and experiences into your physical reality. So since beliefs generate reality, it's very important that we become masters of choosing our preferred point of view. Now, like I said, if we have a belief system that is different than the new point of view that feels better to us, but we still have this lingering belief system of the previous points of view that seemed true to us like five years ago or even a day ago, then we have this paradox or this contrast of having certain beliefs but knowing that they're not absolutely true, but still sort of believing in them and having access already to a newer point of view, a higher state of consciousness, a higher state of vibration, a higher state of understanding, a more expanded way to see life. In other words, a different point of view that resonates more with your I am soul consciousness. And so then we have the situation where you feel like you are crystallized on a certain vibratory level that does not compute with who you really are or want to be. That's where the fake it till you make it comes in. So now you turn to the new point of view, you place your attention on the new point of view, the new imagination, the new thought form, the new way of seeing life, the new understanding of how this universe works and how worthy you are and who you are and why you are here and what you are capable of, etc. So any point of view about anything regarding life, the universe, existence, God, spirituality, enlightenment, or you as a person, like how worthy you are and who you are, any type of um, point of view related to any of these crucial topics that directly address your experience of life. When you choose a new point of view that is fairly new to your belief system, then you have, again, you have this difference. And this is where people can feel like they have to fake it till they make it. And in a sense, that, that is my suggestion because that can work. So what you do is you keep repeating that new point of view as you used to do with your previous one, which then turned into a belief system. But now you have this old belief system, but now you keep repeating the new point of view. And so it feels slightly fake. But when you keep repeating that new point of view, 
it will naturally start to shift your vibratory state in such a way that suddenly what previously seemed fake now starts to seem real because you start to download feelings from it. As soon as you start to feel the new point of view that you're seeing, your belief system starts to readjust itself because as soon as we feel a new point of view, as soon as we download the feelings from that new imagination, that new reality, that new state of being, that new perspective or point of view, as soon as we start to feel what we're seeing, how we're seeing life, it starts to seem real to us. So then it starts to shift from feeling like it's a fake point of view or like you don't really believe in it to, oh, hey, wait a second, this might actually also be true. This might actually be a relevant, valid point of view. It might actually be able to work in this way. And that's when you start to feel it. And when you start to feel it, you start to believe it. It's like the previous lesson where we practiced seeing it, then feeling it, and then being it, which is the natural process of moving away or shifting from a present paradigm into a new paradigm or into a new understanding of who you are or into a new manifestation of who you are. First, we see it. We see the new vision, the new imagination. We're tuning into a parallel reality that seems quite distant from ours. It seems to be removed a little bit from ours. But then, as soon as we start to tune into it more frequently, the fakeness factor starts to disappear because even though it may seem fake to our belief system, we may think, oh, life works in this particular way. This can never be true. This is not how it works. This is just a fairy tale. But as soon as we keep imagining that very fairy tale reality or that new alternate paradigm that resonates much more with us, that excites us, or that at least has the potential to excite and accelerate us that much more. It starts to feel fake at first, but then as soon as we imagine it more and more and more and more, suddenly we start to download glimpses. We are actually already shifting closer and closer into vibrational alignment with the new perspective, the new point of view, the new state of being. And then we start to feel it. And when we feel it, the feelings start to convince our belief system that this point of view is no longer fake. It's actually equally valid. That is when we start to be it, to become it, to believe it, to be convinced of it, to act according to it, etc. So this is again how we change ourselves completely to true, complete, changed being. So it's very powerful to know how to access your points of view. And you can do this using imagination because in a sense, every moment you are having a point of view, you're activating a point of view of life, an understanding, a filter, a way of seeing creation. So simply be aware of what you're saying to yourself right now, of how you're seeing life right now. Are you seeing it from a lens that feels depressive to you? Then it means that your lens or your perspective or your state of being is not in accordance with the truth of the universe, the truth of source, the truth of existence, the truth of your higher self. Do you feel amazing about this moment? Then your perspective of this moment must somehow be in vibrational alignment with the greater understanding of this universe, of existence, of source, of creation, of God, of life, of you as an individual, of your higher self. So when you get in alignment, you start to feel really good. The good feelings start to convince your belief systems that you really do have the capacity to change and to transform and to manifest whatever your heart truly desires with integrity and then starts to manifest as belief systems and then the beliefs will attract that reality. They will manifest, they will shift you into an alternate parallel reality universe where that experience already existed and was already yours to begin with. So to continue with the schematic of the five levels of consciousness, it is beliefs that generate emotions. You cannot have an emotion about something that you don't have a belief about. In other words, I often use the example of the doorknob. So I ask people, people often think that there is inherent meaning in things. And in the Enlightenment One course, we've explored that there is no inherent meaning in events and things. So, but many people do believe that. They do actually feel that their misery comes from an actual circumstance because they lack finances, because someone else made them sad, because someone else said something, whatever it is. We project onto our circumstances that there is real meaning in them being transmitted into our state of being. This is energetically impossible. We can only ever give to ourselves a feeling, a belief, a thought, a perspective, an experience, an emotion. So if something in the environment 
bounces up against your belief system. That belief will then trigger an emotion. Why? To let you know whether or not your perspective, your belief, is in or out of alignment with who you truly are. So you see, emotions are benign. They are guidance posts. They are guidance points. They are guidance compass. You, they are your guidance system. So we have to really appreciate the nature of emotions from this particular angle. Do not overanalyze the emotion itself because it's not that relevant what type of emotion it expresses itself through. Sure, you can gain certain types of insights by investigating that, but it's not that relevant. What is relevant is simply to simplify the process and ask yourself, does this emotion feel good or bad? That's all you need to ask yourself. If the emotion feels good and welcome the emotion, obviously, because it's guiding you into greater clarity, even and especially if it feels negative. So don't condemn the negative emotion, welcoming it, welcome it in, appreciate it, celebrate it, be excited to see it, go, oh wow, welcome into my experience. I'm so grateful that you show yourself because you want me to become more who I truly, more of who I truly am and less of who I truly am not. So thank you, negative emotion. Witnessing you here is a positive event. So I'm really glad you visited me. I'm really glad my emotional guidance system is operational, is functioning. I'm really happy that my higher self is communicating to me in the form of emotions. So appreciate negative emotions. Don't take them as a sign of non-progress or digressing or uh, not doing good enough or not getting this or not being able to manifest who you wish to be and the circumstances that you wish to experience. Negative emotions are a sign of progress. They're a sign of your state of being actually expanding past your previous paradigm. Therefore, everything that you're holding onto in that previous paradigm will now boom, bounce up to the surface because you're about to expand past that ceiling, past that vibrational ceiling, past that vibrational threshold. So when you witness a negative emotion coming up, that's a positive event and you wish to completely appreciate it and be really confident about approaching that negative emotion with a positive state or interpretation. When you do that, you continue to accelerate without effort. So the negative emotion comes up and it lets you know that there is a belief that you have about the circumstance you just ran into. So the circumstance seems to trigger the emotion, but it's actually the circumstance that bounces off of, that plays with your perspectives. In other words, your beliefs, which are crystallized perspectives, and then the higher self, in a sense, or your, just the way energy works, your energy will let you know whether or not that belief is in or out of alignment with your true, ever-present, always-on, you're always inundated with it, true core frequency of being. In other words, your true identity as an individuated expression of the all that is consciousness, of which you are an inseparable co-creating aspect. So you feel bad, let this let you know, this is a good thing, it lets you know your perspective of the environment, of the circumstance, of the person you're looking at, is out of alignment with who you are. Not what happened, per se. What happened is simply a neutral event, triggering a belief which is a bias, which is not neutral. It's, it's a perspective crystallized in a certain version of itself. And then that belief is shown to you through the emotional body or the emotional guidance system, right? So you can't have an emotion about a doorknob. Most people don't have an emotion about a doorknob. I can touch a doorknob and you won't feel a thing. That is because you don't have any beliefs that are personalized about a doorknob. You don't have a strong bias about the doorknob. If you were to have a strong bias about the doorknob, for example, your mom always told you that you and that particular doorknob are really tied together. Your fates are connected. So if someone scratches or touches or hammers down on that doorknob, your belief system will show itself in your emotional being because you have a belief about the doorknob. But since nobody ever teaches each other to have beliefs about doorknobs, or at least not personalized beliefs, no biases, we start to, uh, we won't feel anything when we're talking about a doorknob or when I'm touching a doorknob or scratching a doorknob. So you see, there is no inherent meaning in circumstance. And the only thing that ever gets triggers an emotion is a belief, which is a crystallized point of view, which you can change by moving into another point of view. So this is how it's so helpful to bump into circumstances that trigger beliefs that then trigger emotions. 
Now here's where the fifth level comes in. So emotions was the second level, which we usually in our society call the subconscious. Beliefs are called the unconscious. Emotions are called the subconscious. And the conscious mind is the thinking mind, the thoughts. Now what is the purpose of thoughts? The thoughts are meant to be utilized in the following way, simply to reflect upon what is or what has happened. It's a reflective mechanism, a reflective tool. And all it can really reflect is either the circumstances or the emotions. I mean, you can take it to the next level and you can utilize thoughts and get more into the higher mental type of thinking that is more abstract, that's more spiritually oriented in a sense. And then you can use that in a very contemplative way. But in general, thoughts are simply reactions to either the circumstances, the environment, or the emotions that are triggered by the environment. So they react. Many people think that thoughts trigger the emotions because when you think of a certain thing, it comes with a certain emotion, which is true. But what happens is that because you're thinking about a certain thing, that certain thing is a circumstance. The circumstance that you're imagining or thinking about or referencing somehow has a certain type of relationship to your belief system and then whether or not your belief system is aligned with abundance or aligned with lack, you will either feel really great about what you're thinking about or really bad about what you're thinking about. So thoughts can only react to circumstances or emotions, generally speaking. Emotions are triggered by beliefs, by the unconscious. The purpose of emotions is to show you that you have an unconscious and that there is beliefs there that may be unbeknownst to you may not be known to you and that you can transform these by shifting into another perspective of life, by taking on another belief system, by taking on another state of being, by changing your frequency, by feeling different in your state of being, by having a different perspective of life. And when you reiterate that new perspective multiple times or for a duration of time, then that new imagination, that new way of seeing life will start to feel real. And when it starts to feel real, you start to believe it's real. When you start to believe it's real, is there as the new belief system, the new paradigm that will then generate a new set of emotions and thoughts and circumstances, etc. So simply be aware of these five levels and know that your power lies in the level of the I am having a certain point of view of life. That is where the majority of your power lies. And yes, you can use thoughts and emotions and beliefs to work with and to reflect upon that and to therefore allow yourself to become more aware of what is your true spirit's preference and what is not, or who you really are and who you really aren't, so that you can then choose your new perspective. But the power of changing your reality lies on the level of perspectives, of the non-physical belief systems, the non-physical perspectives, the state of being, the vibration, the frequency, the vibrational attitude, etc. Your mood almost, I could say as well. Your overall mood, your overall way of seeing life, your overall attitude. So study the schematic below this video and get a clear sense of how this is operational in you and see that circumstances bump up against your belief system, which then let you know through the feeling state, through the emotional state, whether or not that belief should be looked at or should just be continued to be executed and believed in, in a sense, because it feels really amazing and it serves you at this particular time. Doesn't mean it will always serve you because you change a lot. And so will the belief systems that serve you, depending on your stage in your own evolution, etc. So study the schematic and the homework for this lesson is to listen to this lesson or to read this lesson at least once more to study the schematic before your um, next lesson. And I would love for you to simply during everyday life, at least for the next two days until you start your next lesson, but that can be longer if you feel like it, to become aware of this process in action. So notice that when you have an emotion come up, just remember the schematic, pull it up in your imagination and recognize, oh, the environment triggered or bumped up against my belief system. I now feel bad, but that's a good thing because I want to see what feels bad when it comes up organically, at least. I'm not going to go look for it, but when it comes up organically, I want to look at it because it has some significance for me to look at. Otherwise, it wouldn't come up. So my higher self is letting me know, hey, there is a belief that's out of alignment but you see that it's not in the circumstances. So you become more of a conscious person with a greater sense of integrity and not projecting as much onto other people and your environment, how you feel. 
But now you start to, in a positive way, internalize that and integrate that and see that there is no inherent meaning and either positivity or negativity in circumstances or events or molecules, which is all that this exists of, seemingly. It is simply our belief systems that are colored in a certain way that then give rise to emotions depending on whether or not our beliefs are in alignment. So simply witness this process in everyday life and then go to the perspective level. Choose to have a different view of that same moment and see how it starts to, when you see it and then you feel it and then you be it, when you start to concentrate on that new visualization, that new view of life, that new understanding of that same exact experience. When you start to cultivate that and bring that into your imagination, you start to feel it and you start to be it and notice how your belief system starts to tweak itself. It starts to change. You have these, oh, aha moments where you feel, literally feel your belief system disappearing and another perspective becoming crystallized. And then you feel suddenly really good about the same scenario because you have eliminated the lack belief or you've transformed the lack belief into some kind of an abundance view of the same circumstance. So what you previously labeled as, oh, this is lacking. This person is telling me that my clothes are ugly. That means I like worthiness. That means I like love and acceptance. That means I like the money to buy new clothes. And that made you feel bad. The person saying something did not make you feel bad. Notice this in everyday life experiences. The circumstance does not transmit a state of being into you. It's impossible. Only you can transmit a state of being into your state of being. Only you are in full control of how you feel and what you see life through how you see life. So you start to feel this belief system tweaking and replacing the lack beliefs of I don't have money to buy new clothes, I'm not worthy of being loved with I don't really care because A, that person has just its own point of view, which is equally valid. I appreciate that they have their own view of life. It's relevant for them. Mine is relevant for me. I feel really comfortable in these particular clothes. They suit me. They are an extension of who I feel I am on the non-physical level. So I feel great in them. I feel like this makes my physical suit more transparent to my true higher personality, my true higher character or nature. There is infinite abundance. If I want new clothes, I can somehow attract new clothes. I have no problem believing that because I know that this is a creation of infinite parallel realities and it's all a matter of shifting frequency into a paradigm where that already exists. So if I need, if I want to buy new clothes, I'll somehow attract the money to get the new clothes and it will feel relevant and it will feel great. But right now I feel great walking around in these clothes and I feel like I'm an expression of the universe. I feel abundant, I feel connected. I feel inseparable from all that is. I feel desire to be as I am by all that is, regardless of another person's point of view. And so I feel great, I feel connected to who I truly am. I feel abundant, I feel confident. I am happy, I love this person because he is a reflection of my own spirit and he is showing me more of who I am and is guiding me into greater clarity. And now suddenly, having gone through that new view of the same circumstance or views, you start to feel it and then you start to be it and it starts to lock itself into the belief system. And now the next time a person says, hey, I don't like your clothes, what's most likely to happen if this is anchored in properly? and the lack beliefs are truly transformed, is that your first immediate emotional reaction now will be, thank you, that's amazing. Why? Because you've already changed your point of view and with that, your belief system, therefore you'll have a different emotion that lets you know that your perspective is in greater alignment with the truth of reality, which is abundance, freedom of choice, etc. Worthiness, being loved, infinitely loved, etc. Those are all fundamental truths. When you align with them, you automatically feel good. So your natural reaction to the circumstances start to becomes, starts to become more holistic and positive overall, effortlessly, because you've worked on the level of your perspectives, which then felt good, and then you became that new reality version of yourself. So I want you to simply notice this process in everyday life, see how it operates for you in your own mind, in your own being, and start to play with it, start to gain freedom with this so that you no longer project your misery out onto the circumstances and other people, but you really own your own reality. You really own your own feelings. You really own your own projections. You really own that you have perspectives that are in alignment and you have perspectives that are out of alignment and that it is your only job to sift through that using the emotional guidance system to start adopting points of view that are actually in alignment with the abundant infinite principles of this universe.
So thank you for listening to this lesson. Listen to it once more before your next lesson and apply this to everyday life circumstances. Use the schematic, see how it works in everyday life experiences, very important. And I'll see you in the next lesson. Enjoy. Thank you.